Hey everyone, it's Lindsay. I'm here today with a card making 101 video. This time I want to cover die cutting, or just a scratch the surface of die cutting. Now for today's video, I will be using my Big Kick die cutting machine. This is a manual die cutting machine, and this is made by Sizzix. Now this is the same machine as a Big Shot. It is just branded differently because the Big Kick is sold in stores, the Big Shot is sold online. So this is the same exact thing. Now, like I said, this is a manual machine. It is hand cranked. If you have some problems where a hand crank might not be a great option for you, there is the Vegabond. That is the same machine. It is just an electronic machine. So you plug it in, you push a button, and it does all the work for you. There is a look at those rollers that are inside the machine. And now let's go on to the components of the machine. Now one thing you need to make the machine work are your cutting plates. Now I've been stamping for eight years now. I bought this about seven and a half years ago and these are the same exact cutting plates that came with my machine. So I have been using these for a very long time. And you can repurchase these if you don't like all the grooves on it and you just feel like there's too much for you there. You can repurchase these. They're $13 a piece or they're $13 for a set. But I like the straight edge on these cutting machines. They now come with a tapered edge. And that just makes a few more of the techniques a little bit less precise. I like the precision with these, so I'm sticking with them. Now whenever I feel like there's too much of a buildup of paper and gunk on my plates, I do take them to the sink and scrub them down with a scrubber pad and some dish soap, and then I let them air dry and they're good as new. You still have the grooves in them, but they are a little bit better to see through. So moving on, I have the multi-purpose platform. This is the standard one. The machine now comes with a extended multi-purpose platform and it's a little bit longer than this one, but it's pretty much the same thing, just lengthwise it's longer. You can see here I have two tabs on this platform. The first one you'll have down if you want to use your wafer thin dies. And then as you open up the tabs, you can see all these directions, different um, sandwiches for different types of materials and different types of things you'll be sending through your die cutting machine. So there you can see you have an embossing folder and then another embossing folder for like your actual card base if you're sending that through. So you've got all your directions on this platform and also all your sandwiches, which is very, very convenient. Now again, the machine now comes with the extended platform. I tend to like the smaller one just because it's easier storage, but you can also get a magnetic platform and that just allows your dies to stick down a little better. That is something you might wanna look into. I personally just like to tape mine in place, but again, this is personal preference. So you might need to buy certain things, find out if you like them. It's just all a matter of your preference. Here is a last look at the die cutting machine itself with its crank handle. And now I wanna go into dies. Now there are two different types of dies that are mainly used, and those are steel rule dies and wafer thin dies. I wanna go ahead and start out with steel rule dies. These are kind of, I don't want to say they're going out of the market, but the only place I can really find them is Sizzix and Tim Holtz, but he brands his name on it through the Sizzix company. So Sizzix is the only one I know that really makes these anymore. Now you can, again, you can get border dies, you can get 3D items, which these dies are fantastic for, and you can get elements for your cards as well. Now these dies have this foam on them. They have plastic on one side, foam on the other, and embedded in that foam is a steel blade. You wanna be super careful with these dies because if you squeeze too hard on it, you will cut your fingers, especially little hands. If they grab this and they squeeze too hard, it can cut them. So if your kids use your supplies, just make sure they know the rules with these. Here is a closer look at that blade inside that foam. Now, because these have a blade in them, they cut like butter. I mean, you really there is no comparison to these dies. And if you're cutting more than one sheet at cardstock at a time, like if you're making favors, these are really the dies that I liked. However, because they're a little bit harder to find, 
it is what it is now. So I love these dies, but they are a little bit harder to find now. Now I wanted to show you how well these cut to make a 3D item, especially if you're making party favors, favors for your kids' class. These are the way to go if you can get it. Here I have a piece of just plain cardstock. I have a cutting pl plate down. I put my die and then I put my cardstock on top of these dies and then another cutting plate on top. Excuse me, I had a coffee cup back there and I couldn't turn my crank so I had to move it out of the way. I went ahead and ran this through my die cutting machine and you can see here it just cuts this cardstock without any effort at all. Now with this 3D die it also puts some embossed lines in the cardstock so you know where to fold this and it gives you a little bit of a start to get these folded. All you need to do is use your bone folder to score those lines and make sure they are nice and sharp and creased and then you can use a little bit of double sided adhesive and just put this thing together. It's very, very simple. Now, like I said before, if you are making favors, you can run through more than one sheet of cardstock at a time, which is nice. Another great thing about these dies is any kind of material you send this through with your die cutting machine, it's going to cut. I mean, you really, there is no, oh, but what if it doesn't cut? No, these will cut that material for you. So there is no guessing. So that is a great thing about these dies. However, they are a little bit more hard to find. These are what is really popular now. These are wafer thin dies. Now you can get an open die, you can get a closed die. The closed dies are obviously going to be a little bit more expensive because you do have more metal on them. Now with the wafer thin dies, you go ahead and put your multi-purpose platform down with all the tabs closed, put a cutting plate down, I put my paper down and then put my die on top or you can put your die down and lay your paper over the top with the cutting side facing up. Then you just want to put your other cutting plate down on top and then you can run this through your die cutting machine. Now these cut wonderfully. Some of them you might need to shim. Some of them, especially detailed dies, you might need to shim with a little piece of cardstock on top or there is a metal cutting plate adapter which is a great thing to have especially if you have a vintage style and you're using really detailed dies that might be worth the investment i really don't use that many detailed dies so i don't need it but like i said if you're into that vintage theme or steampunk theme you might want to invest in that now I wanted to show you all of the different options you had with your wafer thin dies. Because they are so popular, you are really at a limitless option. Now these most often come in the open form, so they aren't closed wafer dies. They have an open middle to them. And here you can see I have a circle set. And these come with a lot of dies in one package. I think mine has 21. Now that's a lot for this package. Most of them don't come with quite that many. But I wanted to show you how many you can actually get in one package. Now the whole idea of a nesting set is they nest inside each other. And the things you can do with these types of sets is incredible. I mean there are just so many different techniques you can use these for and there are so many shapes you can get these in. So here I have a circle. You can get them in square, rectangle, you name it, you can get it. And if you can't find a certain shape, I'm sure someone will release them someday. So these are constantly being released. There are new shapes being released. There are new all different kinds of these dies being released all the time. So I want to move on to dies that I guess make things. So you have all these different dies in a set and when you put them together they make certain shapes. Here I have one from Paper Smooches and this is an open die set. Some of these come enclosed but you can see once I put all of these dies together they make a large cupcake. Now again you can find these in all types of things. Here are just a look at the few I have. The die on the left is a die from Paper Tray Ink and this makes a bookmark and you can stamp it up, make it however you like it. And then the one in the middle is from uh, My Favorite Things and it makes like a little award almost. And then the one on the right is from Paper Smooches and that makes up a cupcake. Those are just a few of the types you can get. 
Moving on, these next type of dies are what I would call scene building dies. And again, you can find these in all different kinds, shapes, sizes, different companies carry them. Your options, again, are so great. So here I have a grass border die. I've got a picket fence border die. And here's a picture of all the different types. Just a look at them. You've got a rainbow, some clouds, a cloud border die. I mean, if you just do a search on Simon Says Stamp or go to their store and look through their dies, it really shows you just what all kinds of scenes you can create with these wonderful dies. And it really opens up a new element of card making. Now, one of the sets I showed you is this landscape trio die from Mama Elephant. And you can see not only do these create hills and clouds, but it also adds a stitching effect. That stitching effect is really popular in card making right now. They're even putting the stitching on like the nesting dies as well. It's a really cute thing and it's quite popular in card making right now. So I did want to share those with you. Now, along with the stitching, I wanted to share these dies with you that I picked up from Lawn Fawn. Now these do not cut, these just add a faux stitching border to anything you die cut them through. So they don't make any cut marks, it's just they leave that impression of the stitching. Now these do straight lines, they also have dies that you can get that are in shapes that don't cut the actual shape, but they leave a faux stitched shape wherever you put that die. So that is another option too. It's very cute. It's a nice way to add a little something to a very simple card. Here's another look at those dies, just a little bit closer view of that faux stitching you get whenever you run these through your die cut machine. Now moving on to border dies. You are, you have so many options when it comes to these. Here are just a few that I have. Now these can come in closed shapes and also open shapes. So the one on the left is from My Favorite Things and this is going to cut out a border. Now the ones on the right are from Stampin' Up and these are going to add a border to your card. So here you can see I have both types here. So just make sure whenever you are buying your border die you make sure that you get the type you want. So if you want to make a shape card of course you're going to need the one that doesn't make the border itself. You just want the actual shape of the border. So that's something you might need to look into whenever you buy these dies. Now moving on, I'm going to go ahead and talk about these next type of dies, which are word dies, which are so popular right now. These word dies come in so handy for sentiments that you might not think about, that you don't really have a place to put a stamp. These are great for that. And I am guilty of that all the time. Now you can get just about any word you might want. Um, here on the top I have a congratulations from Paper Smooches and the hello on the bottom is from Paper Tray Ink. These are standalone word dies, but you can also get word dies that coordinate with stamp sets. So here I have a happy birthday die. This is from Simon Says Stamp and then it coordinates with that stamp set on the left. So you can build up special die cut sentiments and add in a little stamping to make them unique. Now on that same note, you can get stamp sets that coordinate with die sets as well. Now they don't match completely, but they do coordinate together. So here I have the Ellen Hudson Cozy Christmas stamp set and then I have the Ellen Hudson Home and Hearth die set as well. Now these do not necessarily go together, but they do coordinate. And what I mean by that is while the houses match the stamp set and the trees as well, you've got the heart dies that don't match up with this uh, stamp set. And then also you've got like the little wreath that doesn't come with the die in that set. So they coordinate, but they don't necessarily go together, if that makes sense. Now moving on to stamp sets that have matching die sets. And these are from W Plus 9. They are the Milk and Cookie Stamp and Die Set. And because this is a matching stamp and die set, you can see almost every stamp in that set has a matching die. So it's going to cut these images out perfectly. And that's kind of the difference between the coordinating stamp set and the matching die set. So that's a little bit of the difference between the two. 
There are so many stamp sets out there now that come with a matching die set. You might want to pick and choose which ones you buy the die set for and which ones you hold off on. I particularly don't buy a lot of matching die sets, but there are a few stamp sets that it comes in with really handy. So I would suggest thinking about the uses of it and how far you can stretch that die set before you purchase it. Now moving on, I wanted to show you these dies. They are from Paper Tray Ink, and these are matching die sets to these little stamp sets. However, to keep the price low, you get them all connected. Now most of the time when you get your dies, you do want to uh, use your wire clippers and unconnect them. But if you ever find yourself with a die set like this that has quite a bit of metal in it, in it, you do not want to cut these apart. They are not meant to be. You want to keep them together. That cuts down a little bit on techniques, but that's what makes them so cheap. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, your die cut machine can do more than just die cut. And one of the things it can do is it can emboss your paper as well. Now to emboss, you can get embossing plates or these are widely available and come in a variety of styles and these are embossing folders. Now these are basically two pieces of plastic that are connected together at the top so they make a folder. All you do is put your paper in these, run them through your die cut machine as instructed on your multi-purpose platform and then whenever you pull out your paper it's going to have this pattern pressed into it because it has a raised edge and a recessed edge those push against your paper and create a wonderful texture. So it doesn't do any cutting. These don't do any cutting at all. They just leave a nice dry embossed texture onto your paper, which is just gorgeous. Now I wanna talk about some tools that I use every single time I die cut. These are not gimmicky tools at all. I use these literally every time I do any die cutting. Any die cutting. The first is painter's tape, or you can use washi tape. You can use masking tape. Just make sure that you get rid of some of the stick whenever you use these. So what I do with these is I peel off a piece. I will rub it on the back of my hand, peel it up a few times, or the front of my shirt to get rid of some of that stick. And then I use that to hold these in place as I'm running it through my machine. Now these are especially great for your matching stamp and die sets. Anything that you want to die cut that you've stamped that needs to be in, a, in an exact position, this is wonderful to use. Now with the magnetic platform, it does tend to move around a little bit. That's why I prefer the tape. I know it's not going anywhere. Now when you do this, like quite a few times, like here with this paper or with this bookmark die, I do get a little bit of it stuck to the back of the die. It doesn't affect it at all. It still works wonderfully. And I use both painter's tape and washi tape. I switch it up just to whichever is closest to me. Now another thing I use this for is if I have a die cut that is stuck in the die that I just can't get out, I'll use my tape to pull that out. Now another thing that I use often is my quick sticks tool. I use this for putting down my sequins like you see in most videos. However, it has a great little point on the end. This point is very sharp, so I always keep it tucked in there, but you can pull it out and just have this little piece on hand. And then a lot of dies come with these little holes in them, and that point sticks so nicely in there just to poke these out and make them come out of your die. Now another thing that I use this for here with this picket fence die is the perfect example. Every time I die cut this, you get all these little white pieces left over inside. Now I use my little quick sticks pick tool here at the back of it just to poke those out to make sure that I don't ruin my die by die cutting too many times with those stuck in there. And then I can take my painter's tape or washi tape, whatever you have on hand, and I can use that just to pick up all those little pieces very quickly so I'm not left with a huge mess. This is just a great little trick to use. Then you can just crumble this up and throw it away and you don't have to worry about collecting all the little tiny pieces. Now the last tool I want to talk about are wire cutters. Now my wire cutters are huge, but I use mine for woodworking as well. So you can get by with a much smaller pair of wire cutters. These are great for when you first get your dies. They all come connected, and these are great just to snip off those little sharp points whenever you break them apart. 
Now the last thing I want to talk about is storage and that is because once you have collected and amassed a great dye collection you're gonna need somewhere to store all these now normally they come in either paper pouches or they come packaged in plastic pouches like stamps however Ellen Hudson has these great really thick pockets that you can put these in and they also sell the magnetic sheets as well so that is a great option for storing your dies and knowing where for more information on all of this die cutting you can visit my blog I have a write-up over there and also I will leave a link to all of the tools and the die cutting machine that I talked about today I do want to say though shop around for the best price whenever you are purchasing your die cutting machine don't just use my link and that goes for all of my supply lists as well. Make sure you do your smart shopping whenever it comes to craft supplies and stretch your craft dollar as far as it will go. Thank you guys so much for watching today and happy crafting.